is Evan the Magic Engineer and in this pack and point video uh, what I want to talk about is um, there's been a lot of discussions of course about like you know magic's bubble popping and you know all these enormous sky-high prices falling and I've been getting a lot of questions from people on do I think the bubble's gonna pop and what cards are gonna go up or which cards are gonna go down and um, the reason I've already spoken about this topic on like other videos, but I want to talk about it right now because I think there's been a change in the direction, kind of like the flow of the market, and um, I think that's worthy of actually talking about. And uh, then also, I actually like to talk a little bit about what I think could actually happen in like a market downturn. I just put another video out real, real recently saying that I think there is going to be a crash in the market. And I, I meant like stock and real estate and all that because there's like, um, cause the interest rates are actually still going up at the federal funds rate. And I showed some math on this other video. In fact, I'll link it, um, why that actually can cause a crash in like, uh, real estate and stock market and maybe even bond market at this time. So I'll, I'll relate to that towards the end of the video, but right now um, let's focus on what I where I think the market is going right now for Magic cards. And at least I, when I give this kind of outlook, this is kind of what I see is happening for the next like six months up to like several years maybe. And this is all just a guess, right? So um, let's go to, okay, so this display here. We're looking at an underground C from revised edition and everyone knows the dual lands have gone up in value like crazy. And so you can see this amazing appreciation from like, you know, $97 all the way up until like they hit like a peak of like almost like a thousand dollars a piece. Right. But, um, this, this looks like an amazing trend, but let's look at what happens when we just zoom in here on the end. What you can see here is after that last spike, it's, it's kind of plateaued and it's kind of like been pulling back a little bit. Um, that This is actually what I'm wanting to talk about right now because what I personally see is I think that these, a lot of the bigger cards, the really expensive cards, they've done their big run up for a while. And I don't personally think there's gonna be like a bubble pop. I don't think that anything is gonna come crashing down but I do see it plateauing for a while. And that's not just because, like, I'm not just pulling that out of the blue sky. Um, I've done magic for 23, 24 years now. And that's honestly what I've seen it do for almost all that time for, like, these kinds of cards. You know, they'll, they'll, it's like, it doesn't go like a big move up and then a bubble pop. It kind of goes in a staircase kind of pattern is what you see. Now, that chart on MTG Goldfish, it doesn't really show it because it only goes back, you know, like a couple years or one year or something. But if you were to go way back on many of these different cards, what you find is they kind of like, they stay flat sometimes for five or six years, and then they'll go up, then they'll be flat for a while, then they'll kind of go up again. And it just kind of has this staircase pattern kind of slowly going up. Now there are retracements, of course. There are moments in time where there's a pullback that actually happens. So that can happen, but for the big cards, the ones that, you know, that myself and others have been telling people, like, go get these cards, I don't think there's going to personally be a huge retracement. I think it's just going to be like a small settling out of prices and like a consolidation phase that's going to go on for a while. And then, like, eventually, like, the prices are going to, like, stabilize and start, eventually start going up again. So... This could be a good purchasing time um, after that consolidation phase happens and the prices come down and kind of get smaller for a little while. If my guess is right, that would be a good time to go out and get your cards. But I don't personally see it like falling that much, but I do see like a little bit of pullback. And that's something we should actually talk about. I'm like, why is it gonna consolidate? Well, in order for a price to go down, you have to have more sellers than you actually have buyers, right? When there's a, a bounty of a, a plethora of cards or just any, any asset that's floating around on the market and all these ones are competing with each other, it's like a race to the bottom for prices, right? So um, you have to have a situation where a lot of people start dumping their cards on the market. Now, the thing is, for all these like reserve list cards and all these like old school cards and stuff, the reason why I and many others knew they were such a good investment 
is because they're incredibly rare and people are actively using these in tournaments, right? Many people, they want their play sets. They bought these cards and they got them for decks and they're actively using them, right? Of course there's people that are investors. And of course there's people that out, try to go out there and corner the market in one place or another. But for the most part, I think it's actually organic growth from people that actually want to play the game. Having said that though, um, sometimes, you know, when you, if, if you have a market of 100,000 buyers and 106,000 sellers, I mean, that's, that's a lot of people buying and selling every day, but that little bit of volume difference will like drive a price down, right? Because you had a little bit more sellers. But when you've got like 10 buyers and sellers, right? It's very low numbers because there's not very many of them out there. If now like 20 people come out and sell, well, you just doubled the amount of people that are all selling and that'll have a big negative pressure on it. So it wouldn't, it didn't take a lot of people to drive these prices up and it wouldn't take an awful lot of inventory coming back onto the market to drive the prices down a little bit. But the thing is though, there's an awful lot of people out there that were waiting to buy them at better prices, but they just really couldn't because they were getting ready to like buy those cards and then the price just got a little bit out of their range. So that's going to give a lot of resistance, you know, to the price falling too much. I mean, this underground sea that I'm pointing out here, if this thing was going to fall much below $700, man, I'll tell you right now, if they drop down to a hundred bucks a piece, I'm going to start buying a bunch of them for decks and stuff like that. I mean, there, and I know there's a lot of people that'll start buying them way before me at a price like that it's not going to be allowed to get down to real low prices because there's an awful lot of people sitting there. But it will fall some. Now, why does it fall some? Of course, like I was saying, because there's sellers. Why are some people going to sell? If, if I'm, What I'm telling you is that people are passionate about it and they love it. Well, it's because there actually is some people that were just investors. There are people that were out there just to make a buck. And they bought them because they were going up. Those are the people that are going to sell. So... If there's like a financial downturn, and this is a good transition into that kind of topic. Say the Fed keeps raising rates, stock market starts pulling back, housing starts pulling back, people get stuck, you know, because they were over leveraged, they carried a lot of debt, and now like they need cash because they need to like actually just pay their rent, pay their mortgage, something like that. Maybe they lost their job. It could be a bad situation. That's not, a, not good stuff, by the way, but say there's some of that stuff going on. Well, if, if you were one of the guys who bought the cards because you just love those cards, then you're just going to hold on to them with everything you've got. But if you're one of the guys that just bought it for an investment, well, if the investment's falling, that's when you're going to sell. You didn't buy it because you loved it. You bought it because you just wanted to like have a good investment to make money with. Those are the guys that are going to sell. Now, I don't have data to show this. I just know from talking to people, I know there's investors and I know there's an awful lot of players. My sense of it is that it's way less actual investors than it is actual players. But there are investors. And that's what I think is going to cause these prices to pull back a little bit. Because like, even if, think about the flat situation. If a card value, um, let's say it's going to do kind of what I'm suggesting I think they're going to do. The prices are just going to stay flat for a while, right? Then an investor doesn't want that. In the investment world, that's called dead money. You know, you don't want to take your money and put it into a investment that gives you 0%, you know, interest. You want to put it into something that gives the best yield you possibly can. You don't want it to be a dead investment. So if you bought magic cards and now they're going to just flatline for like five years, well, that's dead money. So an investor, just because they're staying flat, they didn't want stability. They wanted growth. They wanted yield. So those investors that saw this big move up and then they started buying because they wanted to ride that wave up. If it flattens out for a while, they're eventually going to lose interest and sell those off. So that's basically my take. I think it is the investors that are going to exit the market um, if we actually go through a consolidation phase. And you're starting to see that now with like some prices are flattening out. You start to see some buy list prices for some of the stores are dropping a little bit. But... Um, I'm not going to sell anything because all of my cards, I don't own any investment cards that are just flat out like great high end investment. I've got a couple of extra copies of a couple of cards, but for me, that's like what I, what I would likely do is just trade a couple 
for those ones I have more than four, I'll try to trade it into some other cards, most likely. But if I'm trading cards for cards and they're all kind of going up and down together, it doesn't really so much matter when I do it. It's more about the relative value of this card versus the rest of them, right? So that's a different game that I'm doing with the the very, very small amount of extra cards that I've actually got. So um, that's kind of where I see it going. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, before I end this video and go to the pack, you know, because this is a packing point video, um, the next thing, and I'm sure people are going to ask me about it, is like, which ones do I think are going to go up and go down in value and stuff like that? Well, you know, my personal take is I don't think that the really high-end ones are going to drop very much. I mean, those have been insane and a lot of prices have plateaued, but I haven't seen that, honestly, on like the real high-end graded PSA 9 and 10, Beckett 9 and 10, um, you know, Alpha, Beta, Arabian Nights, Legends kind of stuff. I don't see those personally falling an awful lot because they're incredibly short in supply. But I do see ones like, you know, revised cards, like nice revised rares, like, you know, of course, the Dual Lands, Fork, uh, Sylvan Library, like a, b a bunch of stuff, like for the fourth edition. A bunch of that stuff, I do see those possibly pulling back. Um, I don't see them completely crashing. I do see them pulling back. I don't think Power 9 in general is going to pull back very much. Uh, probably a little bit. Um, I don't think a lot of those alpha beta uncommons and commons that people have been buying are going to pull back a ton. Uh, to some degree, I think they, they will. But basically, I think it's going to come down to like a numbers game is kind of what I look at. Um, I think the more of them that you've got, like in, like, you know, revised is like, you know, 220,000 of each rare. And when you add up Alpha, Beta, Unlimited all together, you've got like just under like 20,000 of each of those that were like ever made, right? So the ratios are way off. I think it's like the revised in the fourth edition, the ones that have like a lot more copies that are probably going to fall the most in this consolidation phase. And the ones that are much more rare, that people are just going to hold on to much tighter are not going to really fall as much. So that's how I see it. That's uh, That's the judgment call I'm making on where I think the market is going for old school cards. I see it cooling off and I think we're going to be in a consolidation phase and there'll be some pullback and for some of you that might be a chance to buy. And uh, for others of you, um, you're not going to sell your cards. And so, yeah, that's what I see happening. So, okay, all done with that. Let's get to the pack. Okay, everybody. So we're back and I've actually got Kevin here with me and he just came by to actually work on my house. Um, we just bought this house and it was new. So a couple little electrical things and the builder hired him and brought him out. Found out that this guy's a Magic the Gathering player. So uh, then he saw this room and said, that guy must be a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, he's a YouTuber. So well, I gave you some Kaladesh packs there. And so for this pack in point, we're going to let Kevin open them up. So if you want to open them and just get it kind of close to the camera so people can see what you're getting. Awesome, will do. Doris, do you want to introduce yourself or say anything? I'm Kevin. I'm an electrician, and I was fortunate enough to get sent to... Uh, so they can't see your face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Yeah, you got to get kind of close, like right up here. You, you know the angle's a little bit better here. Once yeah, you. so just hold it. Just hold it like this so then they can see. Awesome. It's the camera right there. Okay. So let's look for that rare. Look for the one with the gold symbol. Not Camera's one. not focusing on this. Come on, camera. Okay. It doesn't like my fingers. <laughs> Logitech, why do you not like Kevin's fingers? What's your problem? Okay, let's go quick, Kevin. Let's go quick. Okay. Look for the gold symbol. Let's see. There it is. What'd you get? Midnight oil. Midnight oil. Okay. He got a midnight oil. Awesome. So that's pack one. Okay, pack one. Midnight oil. <laughs> this is fun. Someone just shows up, you're like, here's magic cards. <laughs> okay, pack two. Going to the gold symbol and... My English is nowhere good enough to pronounce that. Well, this is Kaladesh. They're weird. Giraper Orary. Sounds right to me. <laughs> well, thanks, I'll man. I really appreciate that. Show that to that. the camera so people can see. No problem. It's just packs. I got tons of packs. 
Another magic player. It's fun to just share the love, right? Yes, exactly. And pack three is... Whoa, there it was. You passed it. What? Oh, no, you didn't. Or, no, you didn't. Sorry, I just saw the wrong one. Okay. Animation An module. Animation module. Yeah, there it is. Okay, guys, that was that last pack and point. See you next time. <laughs>